good morning good afternoon and good evening happy bringling welcome once again to our 21 days business sustainability challenge and we are on the final day the 21st day of our, our challenge tomorrow there are going there is going to be a celebration a culmination day and lots of announcement all the speakers who has attended this sessions in last 21 days or shared their pulse of wisdom will be available with us on screen so please do join as there are going to be very limited seats available for the same there are going to be almost 70 to 75 speakers joining in tomorrow so there will be very little seats uh, you know number of seats which are available but you can watch it live on our youtube channel bringle talks so don't miss that opportunity and you can ask your questions there as well on the comment section on the chat section in youtube channel for today session as well you can either watch it live on bringle uh, talks youtube channel and put your questions there or you can join the link out here video conferencing link at workshop bringleacademy.com/workshop/139 and we'll be happy to welcome you on this uh, meeting now with this i would like to share uh, i would like to invite along with on behalf of bringle blended meetups platform along with vardhan solworks women lines and poonam foundation and would like to share the pulse of wisdom from the yesterday's topic disruptive technologies uh the yesterday's topic was on human resource transformation and gender neutrality vijaya safir mentioned that tackle uncertainties is to build resilience with the element of efficiency ability and the purpose of job they are doing transformation is the ability to navigate be ready for the change and unlearn few things and open to new learnings leaders must focus on and how do you coach your team for uncertainty vijaya mentioned be very volatile be a fast learner resilient winners are those who can showcase the perfect match leadership talent is versatile just in time be again resilient social media presence is going to play an important role not only for not only for employees but for the organizations as well solutions are foraying into hackathons you know people are uh, taking up feedbacks from githubs above is the new disruption which we could see in the recruitment industry onboarding assessments are going to go with the webinars and the virtual reality and with an empathetic touch has to be taken care when we go online sanjay mentioned more about intelligent question emotional question and he says to experience certainty first one must have to experience uncertainty as a new leader adaptability question is going to be the new intelligence social score is going to be the new metric reverse mentoring is the new leadership capability focus on kpis not behavior to judge people give the team them the space in the social media rather than tracking them down and binding them onto that human revolution is now going on and we are into the best or worst situation for most of us to embrace people experiences irrespective of age and skill with wisdom he also mentioned about an important term head and heart coherence as such if the key is making is to be a modular fashion to make it work and best way is to listen co ecosystem with corporates and startups is the new localization rachi rachekar mentioned that employee is going to go boundaryless mindset of blending professional and has to be from the personal work perspective culture is going to be purely based on social media behavioral patterns Razor sharp training programs will be in a burst within five minutes or seven minutes. That are going to evolve much faster and will be more impactful, along with a lot of aspects of instructional designing. Anticipation in social media, considering not only the employee but his entire family, his or her entire family. New words in the workplace now: work health balance, not workplace, uh, you know, work life balance, and the life phase of employees. today's topic for the discussion is virtual reality and human machine interface and with this i would like to request charu to please introduce our today's speakers thank you so much asha a very good afternoon good evening and good morning to whole global community myself charu mehrotra i'm founder of online magazine womenlines.com which is listed in top 40 women's online magazine to follow in 2020 
It is such a pleasure to welcome speakers for the day. We have Geeta Sethi. She is Vice President Davista India Private Limited, subsidiary of Davista USA. Over 25 years of ex work experience in IT industry and last eight years of work experience as Vice President and Director for Company Global Operations of Davista India, Revenue Analytics Company US. Process strong management and analytical skills and has worked extensively with senior level management of multinational companies and domain experts for banking, finance, securities, insurance, retail, and others. Welcome, Geeta Sethi, to the show. We have Sharmila Divatya, who is co founder at Pringle. She's having 20 years experience in volunteering and mentoring and 31 years in the IT industry. As a part of the delivery organization, she has considerable experience in Indian dairy industry, financial industry, banks, institutions, insurance, and of course, project management skills. As a part of the software quality organization, a vast knowledge base of CMMI, Six Sigma Black Belt, ISO 9001, ITIL. Welcome Sharmila to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. And we have Imran Ali Saleh. CIO, CTO, cybersecurity expert, IT director with extensive global experience in enterprise scale operational technology from Puga. Innovation leader with 20 plus years of experience in information technology with a special focus on infrastructure and cybersecurity. He has a power track record in defining strategy, driving operations, determining sales and budget, all leading up to the digital transformation of business model and protection of enterprise assets. He has built and managed teams across the globe from Kuwait, India, UAE, South Africa, and Saudi Arabia. Welcome Imran to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. I hand over to Aisha to take it further. Thanks Charu uh, for the introduction. And uh, I think we have got a wonderful line of speakers today. Thank you. Uh, I would want uh, to request Feroz Bhai from Kuwait to, you know, uh, give a, ask the question for the today from Imran and maybe he can give a little introduction about him as well. As I know, as uh, CIO uh, with uh, Hapshi Consultants Kuwait currently, and uh, he has more than, can you hear me? Yeah. He has more than 20 years of IT, ICT experience, security design, and infrastructure management. He has experience in the field of entertainment, retail, military, construction, building automation, data center delivery, technology, architecture, design, and implementation. With that, he's well versed with uh, the topic of uh, today, human intervention with virtual reality. With this, I will uh, ask the first question to Imran. Considering the usage of technology, especially more, from, uh, more with work from the home culture, how do you see the impact on humans and how can we make it more real even in the virtual world? Over to you, Imran. Thank you. Thank you, Feroz Bhai, for the introduction. And, uh, your question. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that today currently we lack human touch in the current scenario. And human touch relates to a lot of things like empathy, home values, uh, uh, you know, health. Uh, also, the other aspect is today's workforce of ours is a large number of millennials. Uh, the generation seeks a high, you know, high degree of flexibility, they want mobility, and they, they emphasize on work-life balance. Uh, at the current stage where we are, the, the, the reality and skill sets are a little difficult to hone if it's learning is hypothetical. I think virtual reality comes uh, with a great value at this stage. One is, of course, I mean, there have been already uh, situations where uh, NASA has been using, using uh, skills on how to train people uh, when they are in unknown areas. Uh, there is a lot of experience coming uh, from uh, customer service training 
uh, which gives live examples of how it teaches uh, employees to react and uh, you know retain their customers uh, in different kinds of scenarios. So I feel virtual reality is uh, the closest thing we can come towards being uh, together. And it's definitely something which will bring us closer at some point. Uh, one example which, which we will see a growth in is the travel industry. Uh, industry which will implement travel with virtual tools. Uh, it'll have implementations of smell, sound, touch, uh, maybe even touch even to, to a certain degree. Uh, today we are seeing virtual classrooms all of a sudden being spurred up from Zoom. Uh, there is of course uh, a skill set and a learning curve which needs to be achieved in such a small time frame, uh, where the teacher needs to overcome, uh, you know, to create a live class-like example of how to teach and make the students more comfortable uh, in that environment. But it's not just that; even the kids they want to interact with other students, they want to go for their breaks and talk to talk uh, in groups. Uh, they would like to, you know, have the feel of a classroom, which uh, I believe uh, virtualization will definitely come and help in this. A uh, virtual reality will come and help in this area. Uh, further to that, I mean, we also feel that uh, this particular thing could expand to a future thing where, you know, I could invite you guys to my virtual apartment and take you through uh, possibly uh, a cooking virtual cooking class or uh, you know give you an experience of uh, the my best part of the woods uh, uh, where you know we could go to a virtual woods and spend time so the the creation of virtual environments is definitely something which is not new it's been there for 10 years but the adaptation to it with the current crisis and current scenario is going to lead the way towards more futuristic implementation, which will be definitely more viable. I hope that answers uh, part of your question. Uh, that definitely answers uh, the question, uh, Imran Bhai. I think what I would also want to understand is that in the current scenario, when the, the business is also, you mentioned about virtual classes. And uh, I think, you know, it's a very, uh, I would say there's a joke which is going on around that everybody is now saying they're digitally transforming themselves. And uh, in the social media world, they used to say, yes, I've got digitally transformed, transformed. I started using Instagram mm -hmm. or a Facebook. So similarly in a virtual classes today, what schools or colleges or even uh, corporates uh, they are saying that they are digitally transforming themselves by saying that we have adopted using Zoom. Yes. Now, Zoom is one part of it. And I think uh, as, a, as a technology expert and as a user, you would also know that with usage of a particular uh, technology application, there are a lot of 10 other process steps gets added, which increases your administrative efforts. Uh, plus, when it comes to virtual world, the engagement between the humans and the touch points are, you know, it basically gets reduced or it's basically minimal, almost negligible. How do we increase or that human intervention or, you know, human machine interface, make it so better so that they can feel it more real rather than feeling it like sitting in some part of the globe and talking to people over a virtual world? That's a good question. The, I think, uh, you know, designing a virtual world is more like designing an environment. Uh, somebody had said that designing is not a monologue, it's a conversation. So the, the idea behind it is that we need to minimize the cognitive loads and decision making time so that you, you come to as close as a realistic process. This is not only the role of text, which definitely will put the base of infrastructure and processes and uh, the security element of it, but it's also uh, a lot of uh, involvement with different uh, beings like psychologists, 
designers, UI, UX, uh, a lot of elements of uh, how, how uh, work adaptation happens. Uh, these, these factors need to be put into place because uh, security and uh, infrastructure is, 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 is something which is a challenge, but it also needs to be more towards the edge rather than on a centralized platform. So I feel that, uh, you know, uh, the, the core concepts need to be put in place, like not to give too many obstacles to the user, uh, you know, try to minimize the options, give them a more realistic effect, uh, uh, reduce distractions, uh, you know, cluster objects together to make it more easy and uh, simple to operate, uh, make things easy to look at, find, it's all perception. If once once the user finds this, that it is a natural environment to work with, uh, I think millennials definitely have the edge over this because they 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 understand this on a more natural process, and it, which is majority part of our workforce. So I feel this is an easy adaptation for them. Uh, you know, we just need to make sure the designs are streamlined and more efficient. That's that's the key to it. Uh, very interesting point, Imran, and I think uh, that actually uh, has given me another question, and this question will be there for uh, Gita. Gita, uh, you know, the question which I, I think which Imran has brought up on the point of designs that, you know, what is that? Effect? So you've been working into a lot of a UI UX design. Now, what do you suggest and you know how we can use UI and UX designs as a two different element and probably, you know, as a, as a layman, how do we understand that differential, you know, difference between UI and UX uh, and give a really a good customer or a consumer experience? Thanks, Archer. Very interesting question. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Uh, yes, yeah. Gita. Yes. Okay, great. So first I would like to just give a little uh, background about what is user interface. Uh, somehow the historical uh, history behind this that uh, earlier there used to be a lot of accidents while flying aircrafts. I'm talking about uh, quite early cases. And they realized that the dashboards were not consistent across each aircraft. And that's where they decided that we need to have consistent user interface. So that's how the user interface started happening. So people realized the need for having consistent user interface so that uh, the users could be you know, trained into it and they'll be able to perform their activities uh, without spending too much of time uh, with less errors and you know, have a great experience. So that's how UI uh, started off. And uh, the difference made is that the user interface design focuses more on the look and feel of the screen, uh, whether how the designs uh, elements of the screen are designed, you know, whether they are consistent, they are uh, each button of help logout comes at the same place on all the screens, whether uh, it's readable, the font size and everything. And of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, checklists which a UI designer needs to follow, uh, keeping in mind for the uh, browser compatibility, media compa uh, compatibility, even for accessibility, where he works along with the development team. And of course, they follow a UI agile process for that. So this is what uh, a UI uh, specific role is. Uh, coming to the next point of the user experience is where the user experience practitioner focuses more on how does this application work? Like how does it interact with the user? Whether it meets with their expectations or it does something very strange. Like, you know, uh, you click and you expect that it will perform an action. It will go to another page or will it open another window or it will give you an error. Like, you know, so it's very unknown so here the user expectations, what are going to be there is done by the user experience. So they have a very uh, smooth user experience. They are able to uh, you know, do perform their task very nicely. They are able to uh, connect. They don't feel that, oh, you know, somebody's judging them if they do something wrong. 
So all these things are related to the user experience. And I would like to share one uh, example, like, you know, uh, for the difference between a UI and a UX is that uh, there is a bank site in India which uh, allows you to uh, add beneficiary. And uh, then if you want to transfer the amount, you finish the complete task of uh, putting the amount, the details, uh, and, you know, uh, receive the O2P. And then finally it tells you, uh, you will no longer be able to do this transaction. So the error is something which just puts out to the user because where did he go wrong? What had happened? So this is the user experience which has happened. And then after sometimes he calls up somebody or you know checks like what was the reason. And then he comes to know that, oh, you know, he was transferring the amount of money which was beyond the limit which was given. So this is where the user validation of the amount, what is being put in, or how does the user uh, needs to be informed about the errors, or at least give them, uh, you know, messages saying that, oh, you know, this amount is uh, not valid for your uh, transfer. So these indications all come from the user experience. Anything else you would like me to share? Uh, no, no, I think uh, that's a brilliantly explained uh, version. Uh, I would want to extend this question to uh, actually, you know, uh, Sharmila now. Uh, Sharmila, see, we have, uh, you know, uh, while Gita has spoken about on UI UX, and, uh, you know, uh, we had earlier speaker Imran who was talking about more from a UI, from the interface perspective, from the virtual world perspective. Now that brings another angle, which is the human machine interface, which is the actual interface level, which works out when we kind of, you know, work on a individual level or on a virtual world. Now in considering that scenario, what is human machine interface? And what skills are needed in terms of to have those interface designs, because it will have a lot of wide, you know, it's a kind of wide range of projects which can evolve from computer systems to cars to commercial planes. And what are those interaction design principles in your uh, opinion? See, uh, you need a huge amount of uh, skills, but uh, when you look at design as such, you have basic nine or ten principles. I think I, I can give you that. Uh, the, you need to know how the user is going to uh, use the system. So the mental mo model that the user is going to use. That is one major criteria when you are designing a system. The user needs a paramount, definitely. Of course, as Gita has pointed out, uh, consistency across. Uh, you're also looking at uh, functional rather than aesthetics. You are uh, not going to use jargon. Keep it simple. Uh, intuitive, no doubt. And you don't want the user to come back and tell you, I need to think when I uh, click here. No. The user will not do that. So yes, uh, and like how Gita has said that uh, feedback is very necessary. If it was an amount that was uh, the problem, there was no feedback to the uh, user from the system. So feedback is very necessary. This will give at least some sense in the design. Now, when you look at skills, uh, you have 
psychological skills you have. In fact, uh, today uh, you need anthropology as well. You go back in time. Uh, there's a huge amount of learning that has come to us and those skills are put into uh, HCI. How, how does my eye movement or my voice uh, or my tone of the voice is that also impact So, believe me, there are hundreds of things to think of designing. I, I'll uh, put some examples a little later, but uh, if I'm using a voice recognition system and I have a sore throat, uh, my system is not going to work. It's as simple as that. But it will tell me that uh, uh, invalid user and I'll be out. So, uh, so many things need to be taken into uh, account. Yeah, so, yeah, so you have you have yeah. kind of given a very uh, very good reply and explanation in terms of that it has to be very clear to the user and user will not take user will not go as per that and i think there is another psychology aspect which i always talk about when it comes to ui ux design that we cannot drive people minds it has to be very clear up front in front of them Otherwise, it will be very challenging for them to take up a decision. And when it comes to masses, when it comes to multiple people involved in different territories, locations, geographies, and now probably working from home with already overloaded with technologies, uh, uh, you know, the problem is that unless we are very, very clear and crisp on that and what they are supposed to do, one, two, three steps, and it has to be clearly defined, they will not be. They will not be uh, using that uh, aspect at all, and uh, that's really right. You know, for that, uh, Firuz, by you have some question you want to ask uh, Imran? Yeah, uh, my next uh, question is: uh, uh, Is RPA, robotics process automation, an answer to job automation in reality? How do you see it? Please share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, like any and every system, I think there are two things with any relationship, and this is a relationship with the robot we're talking about, is that you need to be, you need to create a first good impression. And the second most important thing is you've got to be trustworthy and credible, right? Now, uh, with the advent of RPA, especially in terms of job application, what happens is it goes through a certain series of, you, you input your CV and uh, you the related links, such as LinkedIn and all, and it gives you a idea of, uh, it, it'll scan the words and it'll tell you what exactly the output comes through. Now, that process as of now is definitely being implemented and I've seen a few, a few products in the industry which are working, but what happens is the end user is still not clear of the guidelines of how it's scanning and processing the information. Uh, and this particular element of, uh, uh, of, of hiring process needs to be redefined and understood. So like I said, it's, it's got to have a little more clear, crisp idea. It's got to be, uh, uh, you know, the, the consistency of the input has to be there. Uh, some 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 portals are using the user needs to fill in all the information and then it analyzes and implements, uh, which sometimes is a very tedious task. It's not able to 
uh, all users may not be willing to fill in all the information. Some use AI to pull in the relevant data, but the anal analysis of it may not be in the same manner as a particular for a particular job than to another. So I think it's definitely something which is being implemented and used in the current industry, but it does lack some level of credibility and trustworthiness, which needs to be developed with proper guidelines um, to give a better impression of uh, how the process works. Right. Very well said. So basically, uh, if I can say that uh, the places where they deploy this uh, RPA process, if they put in the guidelines to the end users, to the candidate, so the clarity is established, otherwise there's going to be a mismatch between the two. Yes. And the, credit, uh, the candidate will submit something else and the evaluation and rejection of the application will happen for the reasons which the candidate is not aware of. So the guidelines, yeah. the communication has to be done properly to the end user. Very well yes. answered. Yeah. What do you want, Shav? Uh, thanks, Firuzwai. I think that's a marvelous uh, question which you have asked. And uh, I would like to ask and take this uh, question further to Gita again. Uh, Gita, see, I think it's an evolution in the human machine interface, uh, which we talk about, which starts with a basic GUI, you know, graphic user interface, or even, even the first level of the website, and then you improve the GUI part of it. Then you improve, reach out to the various level of uh, UI UX designs, how it is being more interfaced within the platform. And then eventually to, let's say, augmented reality or a virtual reality, and now 360 degree and then, you know, real that, we, which we call it as, uh, you know, uh, teleportation. That is also the concept which is now emerging into the into the market. So how do you see the evolution of this and how this is going to improve the human machine interface in the long run? And I can talk now. So thanks, Ansha. So I would like to share some uh, viewpoints on what I'm thinking, you know, how uh, the, you know, there's going to be such a drastic change or what, what we can see is a transition from uh, the technology aspect to the human aspect of it. Because here uh, with this uh, change in the scenario, what we need is more uh, speed uh, because of the multitasking everyone is going to be doing, whether working from home or they have so many devices they are you know looking at they have a remote control in their hand and then they have a laptop in front of them a tablet or a mobile phone so these all interfaces will have to be designed in such a way where they become so expert but they are not going to sit and look at each and every button how this is going to work so the speed is going to be the main factor yes and definitely teleporting is what uh, people would love to do. They would just like to see themselves on the screen, uh, you know, to be a part of it. And uh, besides that, virtual reality is going to go up like anything now because whatever research they were doing, they are going to speed it up because this is the necessity of time now. And uh, touch is definitely going to be there. Smell, as these are again five senses for human interaction. So they are able to hear, they are able to see, they should be able to feel and uh, smell and also a taste when they are doing some uh, food items or something like that. So all these five uh, criteria will have to be fulfilled and have to be added to the human interface to get the maximum of any application which gets built now. Oh, wonderful, Gita. I mean, I was actually not aware about the taste part of it. And I think uh, you have uh, touched, you know, you just spoken about those five senses, which are, which can be experienced in the real world only till now. And uh, while I think, uh, you know, I think that that actually brings me to another question uh, for Sharmila. Uh, you know, Sharmila, I think uh, there is one another angle, which, you know, which Gita has brought brought up. So one uh, angle which he's saying is that it has to be all five senses to make it really real in the virtual world. Yeah. And all senses has to be utilized. But uh, Sharmila, you have been working a lot on the disability sector. And uh, when it comes to disability, one or more of the senses are practically not working. 
or limited uh, working with limited capacity now how do you see specifically for the people who are like person with disabilities using the virtual world and still getting the benefit of the real world because we very well know that even in the reality in the real world lot of you know the disabled individuals are getting even not even getting the proper education forget about anything else you know employment and further things how do you see disability going to change or add a value in the technology world and how it is going to work uh, it's a huge value as the technology I, I, i am using it today also i am using it uh the days i don't have the use of both my hands i have um uh, voice recognition on my laptop on my phone both i speak and my computer types now uh, i am looking at furthering this let's say we are currently on brindle platform we have uh uh uh, uh we have the the, the uh, technology available and in use for deaf people uh, up and running but uh, with limited mobility in in my hands i talk and i say uh simran uh open aria yeah uh, simran here is my voice recognition uh software the uh, reason this she is here on the platform helping us behind the scenes i am taking her name and adding it to my uh, voice recognition uh open aria so the platform opens i am asking someone again please set up a call with ansha at 11 am uh, agenda next steps for the book launch uh, we are looking at a voice enabled system uh, uh, uh email comes to me but this is a confirmation that, that the slot is empty and uh, it has been booked if not simran will reply back please choose another slot uh, uh, we do not have a, a 11 am free can you confirm 12 pm i say yes it goes comes back and uh, i am done simran log off finished this is one application of a voice recognition api that probably will help all blind people all um uh, people who can't type on the keyboard so believe me that's a value that huge value of a voice recognition similarly currently we have uh the closed captioning or subtitling only in english available on the platform if we have the linguistic up and running i can have it in any language in the world so anyone who logs in into bringle can uh, go through the session sit in listen to his or her language and uh, be there talk to us and uh, the, the language will be translated back to us so uh, why not you are connecting the entire world so uh, uh, why should language be a barrier 
I think, Shamila, that's another uh, angle you have brought in. And uh, I think more and more we talk about this will become more and more real in the virtual world. Because yes. not just the senses, the disability, it's also the language. It is the, the, the virtual part, you know, the real, real part. And, uh, you know, can we really have the feeling of touch? Can we really taste? I am not sure how it is going to happen, but uh, I think the, the world of technology has to move into that level. Now, typically in these scenarios, uh, Imran, I would have a question from you. Uh, you coming in from, uh, you know, you have experience in various Middle East and other APAC and India region uh, as India as well. How do you see, and when you being into technology world for very, very long, how do you see the evolution of these technologies and uh, which Gita was mentioning about touch, taste and smell and, uh, you know, specifically those hear and voice, you know, hear and see is, I can, uh, you know, is easily understandable. How is that going to evolve? Have you seen such kind of application somewhere? So, uh, that's a good question. The, the implementation of the senses and uh, in the real world today is very much relevant to the fact that it has to make firstly uh, profitable uh, business cases uh, for it to start off. There is a lot of R&D going on. We have... Uh, there are scenarios where touch is explored, smell is explored, taste still uh, I'm not aware of, but there are there are situations where these these projects are being implemented on on a very small and exclusive environments. Uh, again, it it also has other uh, other aspects to look at, such as uh, how applicable it is, how how implementation. Uh, on a larger scale would impact and uh, it end of the day it comes down to the multinational so so the business case has to come in in the right mode i think uh, when when we say uh, voice and see is is something which is already very much uh, with ai driven technologies it has given us a very good proof case uh, with touch and smell it's they we are seeing certain elements of uh, fabric companies who are who are utilizing uh, uh, fabrics which you can touch on the go there are devices which you can use to uh, see what type of fabric it is without even being in uh, in front of it so there are some elements of it there is there are there are certain uh, you know we we've all, we've all gone to 4dx movies and 4DX movies is one real example where, you know, you get a, when you're on a roller coaster, you get a splash of water and a wind gush. And uh, you do also get, if there's a fire, there's a small smoke around. So it, it, it is applicable. It's just how scalable can we get, get it to make it more economical and, and uh, implement it on a larger scale. Is what is there, but yes, there are cases in, in the market coming. Very in. nice, Imran. I mean, actually, that's a little uh, eye opener for me. And I think what uh, Gita has shared and what Imran you have shared your real experience. Uh, I have not come across uh, such kind of applications till now. Uh, uh, Bhai, do you have some questions for for our speakers? Uh, any of the speakers? Uh, I will just explain something uh, which impacts all of us and then people can add to it in terms of virtual reality uh, if you see that google maps the way it is it has evolved over the last few years uh, that everywhere when you are going in a car it is well guided and they say google auntie who speaks and you know guides us through the journey now with the new cars which are coming new models and i have been working with uh, gm General Motors and Kuwait. The new models are no more. We need to have our separate mobile uh, a connection and Google activated. It is by default in the car. So basically, when you're leaving, the car asks you where you want to go, and uh, you don't have to be worried about the police catching you because you're holding the mobile or all those things. That's going to be a massive change which is coming. 
and uh, virtual reality is right there on the dashboard of your car okay and it's going to be really affordable there is no need for a specialized gps unit your mobile sim which is there is going to take care of that and that virtual reality all over now we are seeing the delivery from home okay all over uh, that's happening as we are ordering now these guys who are there all these guys on the two wheelers and in kuwait also two wheelers are all over and in so many parts of the world as well so that virtual reality is if they wear the helmet they'll be seeing that ga uh, the gadgets guiding them throughout and what is something we are seeing in uh, movies or uh, action heroes is going to be the norm of the day uh, Geeta, what have you got to say on that? Because that is going to bring a massive transformation in the way the applications are made, the way e-commerce sites are made, the logistics and the delivery, the way the whole gambit of that. Because today or till yesterday in 2019, it was a sort of a luxury or high cost application. Today, I see it's going to be a minimum norm for any e-commerce application. What do you got to say for that? What are your thoughts? Thank you very much. And thank you for your insights. Uh, this is exactly what is going to be like, I was just reading, you know, something about earlier, we used to have certain guidelines before we start making an application. So the guidelines are going to totally change. They're going to be mandatory that you need to put these features in your application because this is how an application should work. And this is the user expectation. So those guidelines will have, uh, there's going to be a great shift in that. So it's not going to be like, okay, you know, you connect with this one. Okay, you connect, you are going to use one device, as you said, and it's going to be how that one device is going to give you all the features of all devices which are connected to it. So as you enter home, it's not going to change the Wi-Fi connectivity, everything, because you'll be having everything on yourself. It's not going to be that you go and plug it or unplug it to get it connected. So this is going to be uh, the guidelines which uh, all application uh, you know, developers will need to follow to develop all the applications which are going to be used now. And I just hope they speed up a lot because we have a long, uh, like, you know, or the backlog to cover up and especially with the changes which has happened, we need to transform them very soon. Very well said. So to, uh, I, have, I have a scenario as well. Um, so if I, uh, I have a scenario. Yeah. Um, I am waking up to soft music in the uh, bedroom. I have a large screen on the wall and currently it is playing music. But as I wake up, it switches to news of the day. I go and brush up. My uh, robot auto chef ha uh, makes my breakfast and by the time I come out, it is ready on the tray. I have my breakfast and uh, I am in my home office. My boss calls. So I have this device, one device on me. And uh, yes, okay, there's a meeting to be uh, going into. So my hologram goes into the meeting. I am still in my chair in, at home. My hologram goes into the meeting. <laughs> and it comes out an hour later. I am back on my desk. And uh, while uh, my child is in the virtual school, uh, there has been an issue. I had peeped into the um, class uh, and 
that has created a mess because I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. So cybersecurity has been violated. Very so nice. The cops have called up on my device that we have a complaint from the school. That your IP has been uh, tracked into the class. So this is what is going to happen. Maybe not right away, but the, the, this is what is going to happen. So basically now cloning is going to happen with uh, holograms, probably 3D or real holograms, right? Teleportation will be happening in multiple locations simultaneously. <laughs> simultaneously, yes, exactly. So uh, 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 this is something that while we talk about technology, uh, these the, are the issues that are going to come up. So, in fact, uh, recently I've met one of the startup uh, in uh, one of the college where I was going there for a panel uh, discussion. And uh, they were wanting to evaluate those startups. So, one of the startups, what they have done is that they have created the vibration bands and which are connected to your. Uh, uh, your bike and typically bikers have this problem of directions or using the Google Maps. How will you use Google Maps by using your mobile? So what they have done is they have integrated these mobile uh, Google Map with their vibration bands with a color code as well, with a light as well. So as soon as you are supposed to take a right turn or a left turn, your that side of a left arm or a right arm vibration goes uh, on that. And there is a light also which starts appearing that you have to move right and left. Now, another version of that, what they have further done is that if let's say, because these bikers are typically rash and, you know, mostly they they like fast speed and all that. So most of the time they will miss the vibration because it is, bike is itself is jerking a lot. And those vibrations and even they may not be able to figure out. And by the time they get there, identify the you know that or you know they will uh, figure out that they have to take a turn they probably have crossed the crossing and that's the time what they have done is that they've put up a vibration probably a hundred meters before with a light and the vibration intensity increases as soon as you you know starts arriving at to that particular junction so that you are basically not missing out uh, on the turn part of it and then lights and other aspects. So it was a demo product which they were doing, but it's a very good application which they are trying to do. And I think recently some of the applications which are also coming in like balance, self-balancing uh, vehicles, you know, bikes and all that. Uh, I think uh, uh, so. this is some of the good applications which will be coming in from the, you know, technology human machine interface point of view may not be the only virtual world in the real world also. Uh, now, in fact, Sharmila, the explanation which you have given in, and I would actually want to share what we, uh, you know, have been patented the, our uh, skills meter product and what is the concept and the story behind it. It's actually the similar story which uh, you have just shared. Yes. And uh, that is where the whole uh, Bringle platform, when we started off uh, three years ago, when we patented it, we started focusing on that. So the whole idea here is that today you are an individual, a robot comes to you, which we call it as a skills meter today. Uh, the robot comes to you, shakes hand with you and tells you, why are you in a virtual reality? Why are you in a technology world? You should be actually a good leader or in a management world. And then the person says, oh, why? But how do you say that? How do you know about it? And this. Robot says, see, you have these, you know, specific skills, which are more of soft leadership skills, much better. Your technology skills are not that great. And if you want to develop that, you can develop those technology skills, but it will take much more time. Would you want to develop or test your complete leadership skills at this point in time? And this robot, that person will say, yes, I would want to do test that. And a pop-up will come in. It is like a virtual reality questionnaire. And this guy is filling up those questions or those answers or playing some games within that. Basis on that, this robot will tell, 
this is the perfect job available for this is the perfect job role for you it could be a leadership level and also it will tell you whether the whether you are fit for a junior role or a mid level role or role or a senior role and if you are fitting for a senior role how prepared you are for that role at this point in time now once that assessment is happening this assessment will throw up certain programs or courses which will make you more enhanced and improve your assessment scores and then this robot will say do you want to improve your skill score and this person will say yes i would like to do that and then some other game emerges this person plays that game learns through those virtual labs engages with that completes the assessment and its skill scores improves as soon as the skill score improves the it matches to a top 10 jobs which suited to his requirement his or her requirement based on his past experience professional experience probably his astrology probably his likings probably numerology and various other aspects and eventually tell you that yes this is the perfect top 10 jobs for you would you want to apply and this person will apply for let's say three jobs and this message goes to the corporate and the corporate say yes this is the perfect job person for me and they will employ do a video conferencing round virtual conferencing with them interview with them there is a game emerge out of there their assessment gets completed and this person is in the job so it is like a scenario that once you are having a ola uber of taxis you are actually can hire people like ola uber with the exact requirements of your skill sets which are mapped as per the job roles and which are exactly fit for that particular requirement because in today's world corporates are also struggling because their at reason for attrition 80% reasons why they attrite is because they were hired at the wrong place and that is a big number if there is a 6 months to 9 months learning curve within an organization and by that time person leaves the job 90% of the college students or the even the mbas graduates college to a post graduates they leave their jobs within first year these all challenges will go away if we have such systems like that and that is where we had uh, filed the patent and we have been working on that so i think that was one aspect of human machine interface which we had been working upon uh, i think it was a wonderful discussion today and lot of aspects uh, came in little more technical but uh, i am would really want to thank and applaud all the speakers today who have made it so so user friendly and actually you know made it more real even when it is so complex uh, in the real scenario so thank you so much uh, to all the speakers with this i would like to request uh, money to share pulse of wisdom which he has collected for today and uh, as usual for his with his story yesterday was avengers by the way definitely ancho thank you uh, it was a very insightful uh, technology update or uh, session i would say uh, we have been traveling through 21 days uh, business sustainability challenge learned lot of things why not at the end go into future so this typically calls the concept of a matrix this reveals the matrix so whatever <laughs> we have is what we have to understand and move forward so the idea is discover yourself and then try to understand how it works and take it into future and that's where we start we start with identifying the matrix or discovering the matrix that's where imran helps us explaining what is creation of a virtual environment in the implementations of this environment more with the sound smell touch and to a greater extent also the interactions the groups and adaptations can take to a next level like a virtual cooking class a virtual tour and these are the applications that will lead into the future so this is the uh, just the connect of the matrix to us now we move further into it and we also understand uh, the designs whatever we do are to be more streamlined with minimum options maximizing value reducing distractions simple to operate and make it easy to look at so this is definitely the matrix and once we have the matrix we need the blue pill or the red pill so here what it is 
we further understand more as a robot process automation which needs clear consistent input clear idea analysis of the data better guidelines for creating a best impression so humans can build the relation with machine and that is the future and uh, going forward, Geeta enhances how this matrix has evolved. She goes, uh, she takes us back to the user interface, the days of user interface, and connects us with the, the fundamentals of user interface. The user interface is more about the look and feel, elements of the screen, all the uh, aesthetics like readable fonts and all, and also the tech compatibilities that are linked to the browsers and all. So this all makes a user interface. And from there, we travel in time to user experience where we understand the expectation in terms of navigation, task completion, control factors, user validations, and precisely the error information to be in the understandable format of user. And as we travel further in time, we come up to virtual reality application, back to the matrix of today's day, which gives five human senses to be part of it. And this is the current and needs of the future into the business application. And we also uh, experience the connected devices uh, sitting at this point in matrix, looking at the remote, looking at the screens, looking at the devices around us, and we feel the same kind of connect. That's, that's what we feel at the uh, experience of the matrix now. Now, Sharmila further takes us into the explanation of matrix, how matrix was created, more of uh, giving us some insights into human machine interface. And what she tells us the design of a human and machine interface is to follow functional uh, importance rather than the aesthetic. Also do not use many jargons, keep it simple. Definitely it has to be intuitive. And the most important thing, human interaction has to involve elements like eye movement, tone of voice, and a lot of psychological pointers that uh, the device need to learn. And going forward, she also gives the uh, importance of voice assistance and how the matrix can be uh, transformed to work for the voice assistants, which are going to be necessarily building human machine interface for people with disability. And that is a great way a matrix can change itself. And few applications to come in future are like the language translation, the task verification, email approvals, a lot many can help people in disability. And moreover, as we look at the matrix, what matrix gives us in future is the mirror TVs, the robo chefs, the holograms, hacking the school classes, etc are the simplest applications that can be examples of human machine interface a, mat a matrix can provide. So that's all the matrix for us today. Thank you. And thanks for all the insights from all the speakers. Thank you. Back to you, Anshu. Thank you so much, Mani. I think uh, we have actually got a real uh, human machine interface experience with a matrix, matrix movie now. And uh, I always say this, uh, you know, businesses are from Mars and technologists are from Venus. They have to live together, but they can't stay together. And uh, this is what is happening in the, in the business world as well. And wherein I have seen 80 to 90% of the systems are actually unutilized. Businesses always complain that whatever systems has been given to us are of no use to us. What we need, the, the, the application is not there. And what technologists say is that whatever we have given is much more what they need. Now that gap is pretty huge at this point in time. And I think this gap has to reduce. And with the virtual worlds coming in, it, this gap has to further become more real, uh, even being virtual. And uh, I'm actually you know, now trying to visualize or even feel, I don't know, with all senses actually, you know, taste, uh, smell, and hear, all of that now. I mean, actually, I can't visualize right now how the technology will evolve, uh, the things will evolve, but I'm sure there is a wonderful things which are going to come up. Uh, with this, we also need to make sure how are our physical health 
and physical aspects psychological aspects how we have to take care on those uh, those elements also because it is not just about the skills it is not just about technology it is also about how you are going to get really alone in this virtual world at some point in time and it will impact your psychology uh, sitting at home for the last 30 days now people are already complaining of uh, health issues and things like that their body clock is changed their routines have changed everything has taken a complete shift and that is a sudden shift so i think human machine interface is going to play a major major role and it's a very larger role which has to come in of course the businesses has to be sustainable businesses will be sustainable only with process and digital transformations now uh, it has to focus on customer with the right type of customer experience and it will always start with an individual with their thought with their leadership capabilities and things like that so i think that is where our four pillars of last uh, four weeks have uh, gotten and with our today's last 21 day i'm actually feeling that i we are going to miss it and uh, this entire thing and uh, i've been already getting messages from lots of people uh, you know around the globe that you know are you really completing it uh, you know uh, or today is not you know is there nothing going to come after this and uh, so just wait and watch i think i would want to say wait for the celebration day tomorrow tomorrow we are expecting all the 70 75 speakers who have uh, kind of come on board in last 21 days who will be talking about their uh, experiences and what they have done with our entire platform bringle blended meetups and blended learning platform demo and various features of the platform uh, what you can do using this platform what are the human machine interface components already been built up how you can reduce your administrative efforts how you can build in more cyber to bring in more security cyber security elements in your businesses in your personal life in your education learning how you can protect your data content uh, you know how you can promote yourself better in the media what you should do and make yourself as a brand so there are a lot of aspects which will be you know uh, which can be done using with the uh, bringle platform so it is not just about you know when we say about design your unicorn and the program when we started building it up with money and uh, the whole idea was that how do we ensure a business to be really sustainable in any times we did we were not aware about covid at that time but even then we were already aware that the businesses will have a challenges on their sustainability and not because of technology transformation but also because of their people and process transformation requirements so it is all the combination of various aspects four pillars and uh, which will be very very important so uh, i am not trying to break it up uh, break the kind of uh, you know uh, the surprise factor for tomorrow but i would just like to kind of consolidate it because today is the last day and uh, i would really want uh, people to kind of go back to uh, the channel if you have missed something please go back to the uh, our sustainability page community page bringleacademy.com/course/businesssustainability you can check the link on all our facebook instagram youtube links or facebook or twitter uh, go there click on that link subscribe to the free community complete your uh, all the day 21 days videos these are all available there in a structured manner complete those complete your assessments take your participation certificates we are going to give few uh, you know participation certificates who have been there with us for all this time uh, but rest whoever wants to still get a participation certificate they can watch it uh, there they can complete those set of questions and they will get their participation certificates as well so you can continue keep uh, spreading the dream wave bringle dream wave and more and more businesses can become more and more sustainable so with this i won't take too much of time uh, on to this uh but one thing is very clear i think uh, thanks i would like to thank uh, our today speakers uh, geeta sethi sharmila devatiya and imran from kuwait uh 
thanks to all of you that you have spent some you know your you, know, you have taken time from your busy schedules and uh, shared your pulse of wisdom with the entire globe uh, we are going to take it up uh, with our tv ott channels and radio channels uh, connects and the media houses which will give us the coverage of around 200 plus million viewership in 140 plus countries so we'll be using uh, all this content and we'll be publishing there uh, to to spread it out across the globe and uh, so that more and more people can get benefited uh, this entire initiative would not have been completed without the core team of uh, bringal myself anshav jain founder of bringal i've been uh, you know we, we have started this uh, uh, Bringal as a as a company four years ago, uh, joined by uh, Sharmila as a COO and co-founder at Bringal three years ago, and uh, she's been also supporting our CSR uh, wing as uh, Vardhan as managing director. Charu uh, added a lot of value and uh, has really taken us uh, to the next level. Thanks, Charu, for the same. She's the founder of WomenLines.com, based out of Singapore. Uh, it's the topmost 40 magazines, online magazines across the globe to follow. And so do subscribe that. Don't miss out the regular updates from her. Uh, Rajshri Rajshekar, founder of Poonam Foundation, uh, more than almost like two and a half decades of experience in HR transformation, people transformation. Gender neutrality is her favorite subject and topic. And what great work that she had been doing with a lot of SMEs, small and medium enterprises, startups, uh, have uh, been a founder of uh, two colleges uh, along with Bhatia Vidya Peet. So, been a very, very professional person and been doing great work and been supporting uh, because of her, these, all these 75 speakers could come on board and she's been managing it single-handedly for the same. So, kudos to you, Rajshri. Thanks for that, uh, for making it such a wonderful effort. Uh, Mari, uh, Mari Lakaraju is founder of Soulworks and Soulworks uh, being our technology partner, a lot of startup tools uh, which it supports. Also, he has been uh, mentoring dozens of startups and uh, we can see a lot of his influence and capabilities. And the way he explains the pulse of wisdom every day, it's, you know, not everybody can do it. So thanks Mari for being there and uh, helping, us out, helping us out to making it uh, really, really successful. I would also want to thank uh, radio partners, uh, our radio partner, Radio Masti 24 by 7 Singapore, which is the only Hindi speaking radio channel in across Southeast Asia, having 1.4 million uh, listeners as of today. They are publishing uh, daily pulse of wisdom on their show live. So do tune into their application, both in iOS and Android, and listen to those pulse of wisdom every day, which is coming on their, uh, on their channel, on their radio channel. Uh, thanks, uh, Women Lines, uh, for being an online magazine partner. Skills Meter as a skills profiling partner. Vardhan for an, as a social impact partner. Ecosystem partner as Billenium Divas Fund. Startup partners, SolarWorks. Financial partner as LAC Wealth Advisors. Community partner, Connected Experience. Real Estate Services partner as PPO Club. Gender Neutrality partner, Purnam Foundation. Beyond Academics, which is the K12 school partner as MBA for Kids, Masters Beyond Academics and business networking partner is ICX Pro. And uh, these are all have helped us out to support us on our Bringle Blended Meetups and Bringle Blended Learning Platform. We call our platform as Virtual Skill Development Center. It is named after uh, my daughter, Arya. So whenever you go there, you'll find her name. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank all the participants, uh, all the viewers, all the collaborators, sponsors, speakers, and my core team specifically been there uh, for these 21 days. And uh, for us, it's actually a month journey by now, probably a more than a month. Uh, but I think it's been a wonderful pulse of wisdom which has got generated. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Be ready for the surprises. There are lots of things which are coming up for today. Celebrate tomorrow's uh, celebration event. It's a culmination day. And we are going to do multiple announcements. So please do join in. There are going to be limited uh, seats available in Zoom. So please do subscribe it at bringleacademy.com slash workshop slash 139. And we'll be happy to see you over the video conferencing call, which is there through our Bringle Blended Meetup secured platform. Thank you so much. And with this, I would say keep bringling, keep growing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to Thank all you. Bye-bye.
Thank you. For wonderful sharing. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Okay.